Salut! This is a presentation I gave a year ago at work to introduce Elixir as an alternative to the existing bloated tech stack. My target audience was developers, product owners, and managers alike, since we're all taking part in the development lifecycle of an application. A few words about me, I'm working as a full stack developer at Cognizant. Applications like many other things in this world starts from the initial idea, then the actual implementation takes place, and eventually the application has to be decommissioned. Okay, what's the initial idea in our case? Uh, okay, let's assume the following scenario. A product owner asks for a pro proof of concept to, to be made. In our case, uh, the simple, well known counter example. At this moment, we're having um, a team that consists of one Ruby, one React, one Scrum Master, and one QA. The code base is quite uh, minimal in, in, in this early stage, and uh, we, we, we can see how it looks so far. No fancy things uh, at this moment. However, at the second iteration, the product owner asks for something more. Uh, it wants the, the new specs now are to, to save the increment, the state actually of the counter into the database, and we should uh, deliver it as a single page app with, uh, with a nice UI uh, touch. So now the, the team structure is slightly changed. So from one Ruby, Ruby developer and one Ruby guy, we're now having two. This from uh, the consideration to have a uh, redundancy and the uh, code reviews uh, assured. The code base also changed from the initial index we, we, we've got. Now um, a Ruby project has been created to implement the API and a, a React project has been also created. The UI looks this way. Okay, here's the problem. The MVP application was a success. The product owner asks to deliver it also as a mobile real-time app globally. And a few questions arise soon after. Is the architecture scalable? Are new skills needed in the team? Am I over the budget? Here's why these questions are hard to solve, because budget, time, developers and computers are limited resources. Also, needed skills are hard to be found, big teams are less productive than small ones, human relations are hard to be established. Without adding extra complexity layers, the tech stack is not able to meet our new demands. Complex projects are hard to be maintained and are prone to errors. Consistency, both in visual and functional, it's another elephant in the room. And uncertainty, it's counterproductive. Okay, so to accommodate our new demands, our tech stack will look totally different. For the web, we'll use React. For the API, we'll have Ruby. For iOS, we'll pick Swift. For Android, uh, Java, Kotlin. Or we may choose to, to take a different approach and go cross-platform with Flutter or React Native. But then, even so, we're, end up, uh, we're going to end up with three or four teams that do not know the business logic behind, so they need frequent things to, to understand that. Also, from the orchestration point of view, we're having some uh, new questions. The product owners uh, may ask themselves, how well do we organize? The developers also they're not going to know from the very beginning what they're going to build, nor so testers are confused about what they're going to test. Okay, now that we saw what the productivity killers are, what's the solution to them? Well, it's Elixir, which is a mature battle-tested language with a large ecosystem that serves to various IT domains like web, machine learning, native, either even IoT. So if we may want to deploy our counter app to an Arduino, then we're covered. Short history lesson. Elixir is part of the BIM language as Erlang. It's running in the BIM virtual machine, which was developed into back into the 80s by Ericsson. Okay, so why Erlang has been created? Um, 
the demands for telecom system back into the 80s were to have a system able to to for real time communication to 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 be concurrent that means to to run multiple tasks simultaneously to be distributed uh, that means to 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 share same resources and uh, to be fault tolerant the ability to to continue with uh, without uh, without failures so um, those uh, the existing languages back then wasn't able to to uh, to achieve these uh, demands so that's why elixir erlang actually has been created okay so why elixir has been created elixir was created to provide developers uh, a modern productive and scalable language for bin building such kind of systems because we can easily see that uh, those demands back into the 80s are the same now uh, today we're also needing we're also in the need to to have uh, real time systems and uh, we're quite dependent of uh, such kind of uh, applications so we we need uh, to to have fault tolerant uh, systems able to work continuously and uh, do their job uh, fast if we're going to look to the companies that are using erlang or elixir we we're, uh, we're see discord whatsapp and uh, Bletcher Report, uh, this is a funny one. Um, uh, they migrated from uh, Ruby Rails to Elixir Phoenix and they reduce the number of servers from uh, 115 to just 8. So um, they also reduce their team size as uh, they no longer require as many developers. And uh, you may imagine that also the bills went, uh, went down. So if we're gonna take the elixir approach our for our um, application uh, the tech stack will uh, simplify to just elixir we're gonna have just uh, one team that uh, will be able to deliver across platform truly native application uh, this the the business logic is singular it lives only in, in one application and uh, by doing so the orchestration is quite uh, different now because uh, we know what to deliver we developers are uh, confident about what uh, they're gonna build and also uh, testing it's quite clear so how's that possible if we're gonna look to this diagram we see that in the far right we're having our phoenix application that's our source of true and uh, there's the place where the business logic lives in the far left we're having the clients so that's possible with uh, live view and live view native boomer increase team velocity with elixir so let's assume uh, there's this new request to increase the ti the title size of our application so the application the acceptance criteria would be to increase the title size across the application so in the initial old approach we had to to create tasks different tasks for for the actual uh, change and the release for both ios and android but also for the web in the new approach however we just have uh, this shared approach of changing uh, uh, the title size in a single place and deploy the the, the change no specific tasks for ios or android okay other benefits cicd costs less builds less money no bit rise, no fast lane. Consistent release. No need to wait for App Store or Google Play. One change, one release. Okay, uh, now if we're gonna look to the demo, uh, we're having these four apps, the web app and three native apps, iOS, uh, macOS and uh, watch, watchOS. We're gonna to the code base and uh, make the title update that was requested by by the team so you can see now the the change has been propagated to all thank you that's my dog